Um, my name is Andrew Ngu Waithombe Ngurumi. Um, I am an intellectual property consultant. Um, I run, I also run a law firm uh, called uh, Withombe and Thambu Advocates, LLP, where we do a lot of intellectual property matters and uh, visual arts and tax issues. And um, over and above that, um, I also teach um, law at um, part-time though at Strathmore University uh, Law School. And, um, and at the very end is that now um, my most and most important concern um, is um, uh, you know, researching um, on the uh, legal frameworks in restitution of, of, of heritage uh, from a participatory perspective uh, at PhD level. Thank you. The importance of provenance research for restitution, um, that question really for me begins from um, um, for whom is it important for? Is it for, um, you know, for a community which is deemed to be the holder? You know, even when it, you know, in provenance work, uh, most times even in terms, in, in, in instances where, um, you know, they have misplaced the naming, um, you know, the title of an object, they still say that it is from a certain community. Yeah? So the question is, Yes, yes, it's from, yeah, from a, a community perhaps in Africa or in Kenya. Yeah, in Africa. Yeah, in Africa. So, so now the question is for, for whom is that provenance research important for? And for me, in, 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 is my, my, my main concern is it is for the community. And because it is for the community, once they know that there is this object that has been, you know, not within our possession, um, maybe some of them do... Um, to how they were taken illegally, and now they are not able to know what still belonged to them or not. Um, so now the community, through provenance research, is able to know that there is an object of ours that has been traveling and has been in such and such places. So it is essential for them in terms of sens sensitization and also knowledge gathering to also know um, where are these um, objects located. So for me it's really important for the community because for heritage practitioners uh, they can easily identify them and they can easily locate them. Uh, but for a community uh, it might not be as easy as it would be for a heritage practitioner who can access museums um, however. So the policy gap for restitution Really for me, um, my main focus um, is what the Constitution says. Article 10 of the Constitution, uh, which speaks to our values. Um, Article 10 speaks to participation. Yeah. And Article 10 is saying that we need um, participation of, that participation has to be embedded within development. Yeah. So when we are having a conversation about restitution, for me the most important element is how do we embed this national value of participation within restitution? Yeah? And it is not participation that is really, um, um, you know, uh, uh, that has been, you know, the normal participation that we call public participation. No, um, it is participation in a very deep way. Um, you know what the African Union um, speaks about participation. It says that it is part of the economic, social, and cultural development of not only an individual, but for a community. That participation, the ability to make a choice. Yeah? So for me, participation in restitution is so central. So that a, um, a community will be saying that uh, and that yes, indeed, that would want an object to be restituted. But then we need to be able to make a decision as to how that process is done, what is important for us, yeah? 
when it is important and, and you know, from the beginning. So it's not, uh, participation is not consultation, really. You know, saying so they're involved from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. Yeah? But then at the same time, within participation, because we are saying it is a national value under Article 10, we are not only, it is not only the community that is there, yeah? because participation is a, it is a dialogue. It's, it, it, it's a concept that allows for dialogue. So it is also how does the community engage with the county government, for instance, within um, Kenya, um, or even in other countries, if it's a federal state, how does it engage with the local authorities? How does it engage with the state at a regional level? Because um, it is not um, really very, very um, isolated. You know, it's participation that allows for exchange um, of ideas between um, the... So my, my main focus for the policy gap is for more... In, more, you know, the, uh, more inclusivity um, and increased participation um, of communities. Yeah? Because communities would not only be interested in the object itself, but also in the process. Because that's what participation is all about, the process yeah, as well as the end goal. So we will also be concerned with the processes that are being done um, in terms of restitution. Because right now, what is happening, uh, which is a challenge, is that a museum or an individual decides this is what I'm going to restitute to a community. Yeah? So in making that decision, a community which is the holder has not been involved. They haven't even started you know, preparing places where that, uh, those objects would be kept. Yeah? But if it is that involvement of communities is from the beginning, you know, through the process up until the end, because restitution is really an outcome. Um, the key priority areas um, is I in terms of restitution, um, one um, is the fact that you, one is really having one consensus um, at an international level in terms of what restitution really entails, um, whether it is through UNESCO, whether it is through the United Nations, um, because really um, there is no proper consensus internationally. Um, but within Africa, really, there, there is some semblance. We know there, we, we have a position on what restitution is. But, you know, the persons who are, the, who are keeping these objects, you know, the... They are not, we are not, we haven't been able to be in a conversation with them, whether as Africa as a whole or as a country, Kenya. So for me, a key priority is not only building consensus locally, but also building consensus internationally. Yeah? Yes, we'll have a policy in Kenya that will be very important, um, but then how do we then feed into this international framework um, that allows for restitution to happen. So a priority definitely is also building consensus um, internationally. Um, and then in, in addition to that, when, while we are building that consensus internationally, um, it is also how do we engage the holders of these communities within this conversation, you know, that participation that I have been alluding to. So if it is, we're making reference to the Pokomo community, um, would the Pokomo community be able to have, to be in a sitting um, with the Minister of Foreign Affairs or the Minister of Culture in France or in Britain and have a constructive conversation about the, our objects, the Gaji drum that is um, in the British Museum. Yeah? So, and, and the good thing sometimes about international law it is that it gives us a platform for those conversations to be had. Yeah, it is, but right now, yes, we'll have a very good conversation locally, but then how, in terms of that international conversation, so that it is not left, because right now, the challenge um, about restitution is that it is at the whims of um, the person who is um, uh, holding the, the, the artifacts and the objects. Yeah. So it's like the carrot and stick um, 
metaphor. Yes, yes. So we, we have the object, you have to work very hard to get to where we are. So you have policies, we put in policies, but then internationally we really haven't um, uh, agreed uh, on, on the way forward.